rang the bell. I didn't know. This meeting is being recorded. Oh, we got two voices saying we're being recorded. Okay. Now we'll do it. All right. Welcome, everybody. And uh, Rotary motto service above self. And why don't we all go ahead and stand, please? <clears throat> Recite the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Okay, and uh, let's all take a moment and um, honor those that are close to us for a minute. Okay, thank you, Bill. All right, top of the list, and hopefully sometime soon it's going to make it to the bottom of the list, but we'll get a COVID update from Paul right now. Well, it's been an interesting week. The, uh, the, the great news is that uh, of all the locations that I follow, uh, everything peaked last week. Um, the numbers we saw were still just uh, <laughs> unbelievably high uh, in numbers that we wouldn't have believed a month ago that would ever occur, uh, but they are lower than they were the week before, um, with the exception of Northampton County was slightly higher as far as the total for the week as of last Friday. But if I, look, I looked at the each day and it really peaked in on Wednesday in Northampton County, that was the highest number. And then the numbers Thursday and Friday were considerably lower. So everything is on its way back down. Uh, what we've seen nationwide and in the world, uh, starting at South Africa, uh, is that uh, once it starts coming down, it falls just as fast as it went up. So uh, the numbers of new cases I expect in a few weeks uh, will be relatively low again. Uh, and uh, and then and, and I'm hoping that that'll be uh, good news, not only uh, temporarily, but uh, for quite a long time uh, that we won't have any huge uh, uh, surges again. Uh, that remains to be seen. There could always be a new variant that uh, surprises everybody. This has been a very unpredictable disease. Um, as a personal note, um, as careful as uh, Ginger and I have been, we do have our five-year-old uh, granddaughter back with us, and she goes to daycare, and uh, she came home with a little cold. Uh, a note, Walter, uh, if you might want to get a COVID test, because um, uh, we just thought she had a little cold. <laughs> it didn't only last but a couple of days, and then Ginger kind of got a little dry cough and uh, not much else. Uh, and then about a day later, uh, uh, Thursday, this past Thursday evening, I got a little, a bit of a cough. We all checked our temperatures. Nobody had any fever, uh, and none of us felt that bad. And I went on with my plan. So we would have taken a COVID test if we'd had any available, but we didn't. Uh, and uh, I went on to, um, you know, with my plans to visit my daughter, who was who's also fully vaccinated and has had COVID. So she's. Uh, sort of super uh, immune uh, anyway, and you know, to visit her, she happened to have a COVID test up in Arlington. Uh, and uh, when I got there uh, Friday evening, uh, we checked it and I was positive. Um, so she and I canceled all of our plans and, uh, uh, and I came home Saturday. Saturday was when I felt kind of the worst, uh, tired and sleepy and a little mild headache. And then uh, yesterday, I spent, still had a little residual mild headache and today I feel normal. Um, so uh, in, in retrospect, I'm uh, pretty confident that uh, my, my our granddaughter came home with COVID from daycare. Um, she had a mild case because she's fully vaccinated, even though she's only five. Uh, and, uh, and, and my wife and I are fully vaccinated with, and boosted. And uh, so we got 
mild cases. My wife was never checked, um, and neither was uh, the granddaughter. Um, but um, we're pretty confident we all had COVID, and there's got to be a lot of other people like us, uh, which uh, confirms uh, in my mind that there's a huge amount of underreporting of the number of cases. Um, and um, I looked to see if there was some way I could report my own case to the uh, Department of Health, and there was, there isn't. They don't want any extraneous data. They want only data that they can prove. So um, the um, uh, I, I've, we've all been isolated in five days each. Um, uh, today is my last full day of isolation. Uh, so by tomorrow afternoon, it'll be five days after my my positive test. So, and my symptoms have gone. So I feel confident that I can go out no, with no risk to anybody. So just as a little aside, um, nobody's immune to this, you know, even if you're fully vaccinated. But the great thing about being fully vaccinated is you're almost surely going to have a mild case. Um, you want to mention anything about how to get tests if, if, if you... Uh... Well, I mean, the government, uh, I hope you all um, responded to the government's website uh, last Tuesday and Wednesday it came out. Um, and uh, Tuesday evening, I ordered uh, tests for us. It'll probably be here maybe this week, later this week, if not early next week. Um, and so we'll have them, everybody should have them available if they were on, on it and ordered them. If, if you haven't yet do, you can get four uh, free tests uh, for family. You can get uh, and, uh, and, and get an appointment for a test. Uh, but it, it was the weekend and, uh, you know, it, it was, wasn't efficient for us to do that. And uh, so we didn't. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm a little torn about ordering tests because I feel fine and I wouldn't want to hoard a bunch of tests, taking it away possibly from someone who really needs to take a mm -hmm. test. I kind of got that going on in my head. Um, you know, I'll order tests if I think I need it, but right now I don't feel bad or anything like that. Right. And another interesting thing, of course, about our cases is nobody in, in our family, including the granddaughter, had any known exposure to anybody with COVID. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there wasn't anybody at her daycare that, that reported having it. So, she got it from some other kid that had a very, very mild or asymptomatic case. And, uh, you know, that's how it spread. You know, Fauci said that we're all going to get it. <laughs> yeah, he was, it was sort of a off the cuff flippant remark, but I think he was right. Well, you can get a free PCR test from CVS Pharmacy in Bamford Garden Highway. You okay. can go to the website. Okay. I myself am awaiting the result of my PCR because I tested negative the other day on the, on the rat test, but because my household has tested positive, my, my brother and my sister-in-law and my sister are all isolating now because they were positive and I don't have any symptom, but I had a home test and it was negative, but I wanted it to be confirmed because I'm going to Atlanta tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little confusing to me too. Like you said, Paul, you wanted to report it. It's of course that means a lot of underreporting is going on if they're not interested in taking the stats and and adding them in. So that's. It, it doesn't surprise me, but it's surprising, if you know what I'm saying. It doesn't surprise me. That well, I can see I can see both sides of it because they can't yeah. uh, uh, verify any data that somebody yeah. just calls in. Yeah, yeah. My daughter in, in uh, Arlington, incidentally, is still completely well. Uh, she did a home test uh, two or three days after I was there. She had one left, and it was negative. But Good. again, she, she out of uh, abundance of caution, she's getting a PCR test today. Any other questions for Paul? Comments? Okay. Well, Paul, I'm glad you're feeling better. And it was a oh, quick, fine. yeah, it was a quick, quick hit and over with. That's what we want to hear. Right. Actually, it seems like you've recovered faster than if you just had the common cold. 
almost. Oh yeah, it, it actually, it's very much like the common cold, except there wasn't much of mucus associated with it. Yeah, um, yeah. And maybe a little more of a headache than you normally get with a cold, but it wasn't mm -hmm. terrible. I can still function. Yeah. Okay. Um, next line of business, I, I was hoping um, Jim would be join, joining us, Jim Rich, but um, glad Reggie's here. We, we are making a change for the president elect for personal reasons. Reggie um, informed us that he will not be able to serve, but he's been hanging in there as the uh, president elect right now until we got this confirmed. And I can report to everybody um, that we did nominate Jim Rich to replace Reggie as president elect and he would become the president on July 1 of this year. And he, he has agreed to serve and he's very, very um, anxious and excited about it. So he's really up for this. Um, we took a vote by the board of directors and unanim unanimously, easy for me to say, um, we all voted for Jim Rich to be our next president elect. And on July 1st, he will become president of the club. Um, so next time we see Jim, let's all congratulate him. Um, I, I really feel good. And I know the rest of the board members who voted for him also feel real good about him stepping into the position. And Jim has a history with Rotary. So he's been with the Rotary a number of years. He was with them up in Salisbury, Maryland. And he actually served as their president sometime in the early 2000s. So like I say, next time you get a chance to talk to Jim, congratulate him and thank him for step. Thank you very much for uh, the services you performed as president-elect up to now. And, um, and you've actually agreed to continue with the scheduling of, of uh, speakers for the meetings. I think once uh, Jim gets through this weekend's uh, president-elect pre-training, um, we may be able to shift that over to him, but I'll let you and I and Jim work through that because he's got a few training things coming up. Um, so for the meantime, if you can continue with uh, booking some speakers for us, it would be greatly appreciated. But once Jim is a, in, in a position, we'll shift that over to him. Are, are you agreeable to that? Well, absolutely, absolutely. Jim and I have already talked about it, and uh, okay. be happy to fill in there. All right, terrific. Um, anybody have any questions on that change? Well, Reggie, will you be able to to continue with your with your uh, membership in the interview committee? Yes, that's the plan, Nettie. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about some projects going on. One that I had mentioned um, last summer. Um, the other day, I took a ride by uh, the corner of Seaside Road and Cobb Station Road, where I mentioned there was an old cemetery back in the back in the weeds and the brush and the trees there. Um, last week, I went up there with my camera and. Um, I wanted to wait until the poison ivy was gone and all the snakes are, are, are hibernating before I went around in there. But I did, I stomped around in there, found about 16 graves back in those weeds and in the brush. And I'm glad John Burtis is here. Um, I don't know who that- the snakes and poison ivy, what does that yeah. got to do with it? <laughs> well, the first thing I thought of was John Burtis when I think of snakes and, and poison ivy. <laughs> hey, I've got a poison ivy story I'll tell in a minute. Oh, God. <laughs> but, no, seriously, though, I'm, that used to belong, just a real short history on it. It was um, the cemetery for Salem Methodist Church. And um, that church obviously is no longer there, but the, the old graves are still there. They're in bad shape and are overgrown with weeds and brush and everything. And um, I'm trying to figure out how to figure out um, who that property belongs to now. Um, do I go up to the county courthouse 
because there's not an address, there's not a building there or anything. You start with the uh, tax map uh, and see who's the listed owner. Uh -huh. uh, and then you can go to the uh, courthouse and get the last deed. Uh, it, it's entirely possible if it's a, a defunct church that it's just sitting there and you would have a hard time digging anybody else, which, you know, that's good news, bad news. You may just go ahead and, you know, take license with it. But I would look at the tax map uh, and get the address on that, if there is one. Should be. Somebody's, they, uh, but they're exempt, so they wouldn't get a bill. They may get a notice of, of assessment, but they don't get a bill. So okay. there's still supposed to be somebody of record. Is that available online? Or do yeah. I need to go up yeah. to the court? No, no, no. You can go online to the uh, North Effie County clerk's office tax maps and you can you can wind your way through it okay you, trouble with it. you, you won't you'll figure it out and uh, but it's the uh, tax maps the county publishes okay i'll do that and you i might, just you wanted to mention that to everybody um because if 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 every if some people are agreeable in the club it's something we could look at to restore the cemetery um much like uh, the couple did on on uh, sunnyside road that's nice Jim. And uh, they did a beautiful job there. And um, it, it may be another project that we could take on if people are interested. I'll get more on that. Um, but speaking more on projects, uh, Mehdi, you want to update us on the Invisible History project? Well, we're trying to move along with the interviews. I have prospect that I met in one of the, of the coming to table meetings and I will schedule him for an interview very soon. And I'm awaiting for other members to come up with the schedule for the interview. And, and I know that Melissa McPeak is coming to, to our meeting on Monday. Talk about, about the tour that, that, that we are planning to, to, to accomplish with all this information that we are gathering. So she will give us some ideas to how to go about it. And I'm looking forward to that talk. Okay, there's other members of that uh, committee as well. Does anybody want to add to that from that committee? Well, I, um, Mehdi, I, I called um, Terry Andrews and uh, I've got to call her again. She hasn't called me back. So I will persist with that. I also meet, met with Jim Ritz. Jim Ritz is going to be really kept busy in order to talk to him about the website that he is preparing and also ask him for his help in terms of, of, the, of the brochure that we are planning to, to, to publish regarding the project so the community can be informed. We're going to kill the poor guy. <laughs> hmm. OK, um, Bill, why don't you update us on the art raffle? Delighted to. Um, I have commitments, uh, ad adding to the commitment list. We're, we're about up to uh, seven, eight commitments now. Um, and Gordon Campbell has agreed to um, give us one of his at attitude, uh, altitude uh, works. He's got to sort it sorted out, but, but he's all on board. He was very excited. And uh, Buck Dowdy, I'm, I, I, I don't think anybody knew Buck Dowdy when I asked, but I did talk to Buck, Buck Dowdy. He's recovering from knee surgery and He's going to get back in his shed and make us a crab, a metal crab, wow. which that, that'll be interesting. So we're going to have a tremendous assortment of art pieces. And the good thing is that we're, we've got all these names that are recognized as um, um, artists on the Eastern Shore. So uh, let's keep, keep it up. Um, we've got, has anybody who has an assignment here and I'm not going to call out anybody's name, but if you've had any progress, now's the time to tell us. Paul, you're you're given an exception because you were sick. <laughs> you got to have a note from your mom, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so we're waiting for, uh, well, Murphy's not here today. We're, we're making progress, but you know, I'm going to stay after you and we've got to get serious now about how we're going to conduct the drawing. Uh, Jim has, uh, Jim Rich is, uh, you know, on the team now. He's going to help us. He's a very creative guy. So it might, it's probably not going to be as, as like the golf cart that Randy ran, but um, it'll be close. And um, if we can, you know, pick up eight, ten thousand dollars on this, I'll be happy. Hey, Bill, Bill and Paul, just just as an aside, we've been looking for the raffle tickets for the in-person meetings over at the coffee house, and we have not been able to find them. If you get tickets printed up for this raffle for the arts, can we add in getting another roll of tickets for the in-person meeting? Raffle? Oh, yeah, that, that's an easy thing to do. You can pick those up at any store. OK, uh, they're, they're not printed up. They're just, um, you know, what you're Portable. missing there is you're missing more than the tickets. You're missing the whole box. Yes, that's true. It has the, um, OK, you the know, badges. What? Yeah, the, the hanging badges and everything in it. So we're going to have to go upstairs and just tear that place apart. Yeah. Okay. And the bell. Now the bell costs yes. big money. Yeah. 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 Because that's a brass bell. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, Jackie mentioned something at last week's meeting, and I know she was kind of half kidding and, and just digging at the guys a little bit, but. <laughs> I'm going to kind of spin it around and I'm going to lay a challenge out there for the ladies of the club right now to make a, to, to make a valid attempt to recruit more ladies into the uh, Rotary Club. And uh, let's get some more ladies. Because in some board positions. That's so we definitely want to see that. Challenge. No, <laughs> an improper yeah. challenge or a proper challenge? Improper. Im imbalanced and improper. Why is that? You have about five women and you want to discount these lovely other fellows that we have in our club. <laughs> they should also be challenged. It should oh, yeah. cross yeah. the board. Very definitely. And don't penalize somebody because they have com have a comment to make <laughs> by offering a chore for them. Hey, Chuck, <laughs> there's a, there's a lesson learned here. Don't don't stir Jackie up. <laughs> <laughs> but I think before we recruit women, we need to 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 approach all the women that are already members to, to come to the meetings and be more involved. Hey, Joe, yeah, if, I, I get, if I get I two agree. women, can we kick Jackie out? Is that a possibility? <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Jackie. <laughs> now that's, that's a challenge there. <laughs> That may be the way to get this done. Everybody brings in two, they get it. I can see now the gloves are off. <laughs> All right. Yes, Jackie, you're absolutely right. The, the guys need to step it up too, and, and we need to uh, uh, take on the challenge as well, not only to bring in new members, but really let, let's bring in some women to the club. Um, We'll do whatever needs to be done. I'm hoping sometime in March, if this whole COVID thing dies down to a, an acceptable level, maybe we can set up a stand for a couple hours here and there over in Strawberry Plaza, uh, man it, have a whole stack of uh, rotary um, pamphlets handed out, give some people some information and uh, very definitely try to flag down some of the women in the area and see if we can get more women involved in rotary. And, um, you know, to step into positions on the board and so forth can only help. That's for sure. Not only the community, but the club as well. So challenge to the club, not just the ladies, but we're looking for direction from the ladies. Great. So keep us straight, ladies. What All right. Um, 
why don't we go ahead and uh, we're going to have Walter give us his bio update. But first, why don't we do some happy dollar things, Bill? All right. Who's happy today? Go ahead, John. This is, I want to say this, I guess, since I've been mentioned in the context of steaks and poison ivy, I've got <laughs> a, quick, a quick story for $10. All right. I've got a lot of snake stories. Everybody has snake stories. In 1975 or six, I was working in Washington, D.C. as a bank examiner. Came home to West Virginia for Thanksgiving. We got two feet of snow. It didn't snow a drop in uh, Washington. My bosses were you know, sure I was lying about the snow. We didn't have all the weather channel that stuff then. Got back to Washington like on a Wednesday. In the meantime, I had shoveled snow and I worn my father-in-law at the time's boots because I didn't have any down there. By Wednesday, my ankles were swollen and my legs were swollen. And I went, I got one of the bankers got me to see his doctor and the doctor asked me if I'd been in the tropics. I said, no, where have you been? I told him. It turns out the, the serum from the poison ivy was in the leather of the boots. And when I sweat, it got on my feet and it's the worst case I ever had. Uh, and it's the first time I ever had to take uh, steroids. That, uh, prior to that, I'd been around poison ivy all my life, worked on the state highway department. Uh, so I do know about poison ivy and I'm very allergic to it now. And I, I got a lot of grief about the snow and then the poison ivy, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a 30 some year old story for almost 50 year old story. $10. All right. Well, I'll, I'll throw in a $10 one too. And I'll give you a story of, about a personal personal meeting with a copperhead snake for the very first time in my life. Um, I was working up in, out of Salisbury at the time, back in the earlier 70s, doing railroad work. And I was putting a radio, two-way radio in a maintenance of way vehicle. And I was under the truck, running the cable from the battery up into the cab of the truck um, to feed off of the battery to feed the radio head. Um, and I'm under the truck, it's kind of dark there. And I kind of look, look around and there's this long skinny thing laying by my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was just a rope or a cable or something. I'm out from under the truck and then a snake comes slithering out behind me that was right next to my head. And one of the maintenance guys was standing there and he stomped on it. And I said something, and he said, you know, that's a copperhead snake. I said, what? He said, that's a copperhead. I said, he was right next to my head. He said, he didn't bite you, did I? I said, no, he didn't bite me. But that was my first meeting and, and how I was able to, from that time forward, be able to identify a copperhead. I know what they look like now. Oh, yeah. So $10 for that. Jackie's got Jackie. Oh, Jackie. Well, I, I have a $2, $2, and okay. um, I would like to know, ask uh, John Burtis, what examining uh, organization lowered their standards to such a point where they accepted him as a bank examiner? <laughs> It's the same one that didn't find out you were a banker. You would have been stalled out very early. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, was a, it was the Treasury Department, comptroller of the currency. I had a badge oh, that looked no. like out of a gum machine. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty important stuff. <laughs> Remember, Jackie. I never rose to level in banking that Jackie did. And that's why she's making this comment. She's, she's, there, so she's going to get a little arthritis from this. She gets <laughs> Thank Remember, you, Jackie. Jackie, John's got poison ivy, and he knows yeah, how to do right. I can bring a snake to your house. I'm not afraid of snakes. I'll bring one. Well, she's got pain. I don't know. Where. Uh, uh. Okay, well, that, that, that was well worth some happy dollars for all of that. <laughs> Any other happy dollars from anybody? I got five. Go ahead. Hang um, on, uh, Medi. I think I saw your hand go up first. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead, Medi. Not so much a happy dollar, but uh, in, it's uh, to to talk about my father's uh, memory. I mean, the, today is his twenty uh, ninth anniversary of his death, and I'm trying to remember him very very much. And tomorrow will be my mother's ninety ninth birthday. If she. Oh. 
That's great. And wow. how much was the uh, happy dollars? Five, five dollars. Okay. Happy birthday to your mom. Um, Walter, go ahead. Yeah, yes, I have a, uh, a five dollar happy dollars because this past weekend I got officially confirmed as not having COVID. Ah, good. All right. So uh, there's there's my five happy dollars. All right, Reggie. Uh, yes, I had a ten dollar happy dollar. Uh, today is my dad's ninety third birthday, so we oh. celebrated with him, and uh, we're really pleased that. He's still with us 93 years later, so $10. All right. He was a young father then, because didn't you say you had your 74th birthday? Yes. Just recently? So he was, what, 19 when you were well, born? Actually, <laughs> 21. 21, yeah. <laughs> no, I think he was, I'm not sure. 20 okay. years old. Yeah, I got a calculator. <laughs> Okay, Paul. I've got 10, 10 happy dollars because I'm, I'm so happy that uh, vaccines uh, were available for COVID and that uh, my family got them. Otherwise, we would have probably been much sicker uh, with COVID than we were. Uh, there, you know, don't don't get infected on purpose just because you want to be sort of. Uh, They've got a new name for it, hybrid immune now, uh, the, uh, because there are still people dying from COVID. Uh, it's still around $2,000, uh, 2,000 people a day or more, I think, in our country. Uh, so it's not uh, a trivial illness. Okay, Bill Payne. I, I have two $5 happiness uh, occasions or something to call out. One, I'm happy I happened to drive by Paul's house over the weekend, and there was the cutest little snowman outside of uh, <laughs> Paul's house. And that, that just um, made me happy because you don't see snowmen uh, much anymore. There aren't many little kids in our immediate area. So I was delighted with that. And the second $5 is... Always... Question? How come they're always snow men and not snow women? Because uh, they're they're men. Okay. Uh, 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 snow snow women are are built differently. <laughs> snow men are built like this. Bill, and so, and you're snow ahead. women are built like this. <laughs> Paul and Paul's we're... was built like this. Yeah. Okay, and um. Who brought that up anyway? I did. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck you, you better watch it, Chuck. I'm trying to get you in trouble, Bill. <laughs> oh, I, I, you can't get me in trouble. No, you do a good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the second $5, I'm just terribly light, elated that, that uh, Jim Rich has stepped up and um, ensured that we have strong presidential continuity as we go forward. And I think we're going to have a great, great time with Jim. And I would ask everybody to support him just as, uh, as uh, you have supported Chuck. And we just keep this train going. Here, here. Absolutely. OK, uh, any more happy dog? Go ahead, Randy. Randy, you're muted. Randy, you're muted, Randy. I'm working on it. I'm working on it there. Right. <laughs> okay. uh, my happy dollars are uh, a little bit of a throwback. In high school, we had a, a couple of mottos. One of them was perseverance and achievement. And my happy dollars are for the perseverance and achievement of Paul Strong. Uh, only the board realizes what he's been going through, just trying to get our signatures changed on the bank account. <laughs> the, the deleted emails that I have in my file just go on and on and on. And Paul just incredibly, with this calm demeanor of his, goes back to the bank and gives them everything they want. And they come back in their calm demeanor and say, we need one more thing. But I think now, if, we can, if he can figure out how to get the three of us there at the same time, 
to right. sign the document that verifies we are who we are, <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna get it changed. So so Paul, like five bucks for your yeah. perseverance. Just, just in time for the next president. That's <laughs> right. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> Well, how much are your happy dollars, Randy? Five. All right. Anybody else? Go ahead, John. You're going to add on. I just want—I forgot to say uh, we had the the pleasure of having dinner Sunday on the way back from West Virginia and Charlottesville with my oldest granddaughter who lives in Charlottesville. <clears throat> Her uh, boyfriend is a PhD candidate there at UVA, and we had dinner. Uh, and there's apparently multiple locations, not the same people, of Turkish. Uh, restaurants in Charlottesville and I was a little taken aback by that does anybody know why there are a plethora of Turkish outlets in Charlottesville I didn't no it's a sanctuary city I didn't know that so there you go anyway it was a very good dinner nice people so five dollars for that okay that's why I don't want to burn this huh all right um any more all right well we have up uh, Next, um, we're going to have a personal bio update from Walter, and he's been doing a lot of traveling here lately, but we're happy he's back and uh, testing negative on his COVID test. Um, Walter, why don't you go ahead and, and lay it on us? Okay, very well. As a, as a preliminary, I got a, a, a text message from Reggie asking me if I could prepare a bio. And uh, we all do a lot of things and sometimes we get them confused. And uh, I got confused thinking that this was something he needed in writing for the invisibility committee uh, or invisibility history committee. So I went and prepared a, uh, a, a multi-page uh, biography and then I found out it was for the rotary meeting. So anyway, uh, uh, I am a retired resident of Cape Charles, where we have lived full time since 19, 2015, having moved there from Annapolis. My wife, Randy, and I have been married since June of 19. Sixty-nine. That would be 53 or 52. We have three married children. The first is Sarah, who lives in San Jose, California, with her husband and three of our grandchildren, Tyler, Ashby, and Hadley. Uh, next is our son, Jeffrey, who lives near Denver, Colorado. And he's there with his wife and two more grandchildren, Finn and Sam. Uh, then there's our youngest daughter, Emily, who lives with her husband in Broomfield, Colorado also near Denver, <clears throat> because all of our children and grandchildren live west of the Mississippi. We try to spend a good deal of our time in Colorado. My pre-retirement work was in the practice of law, first as a prosecutor, next in civil litigation, handling court cases and jury trials in many Maryland counties, representing individuals and businesses. At the end of my career, I was involved in the preparation of wills and trusts, as well as administering estates, which often involve litigation. While living and working in the Annapolis area, I served on the vestry of St. Anne's Episcopal Church and on the boards of the SPCA, the Anne Arundel County Public Library, the Rotary Club, the Hammond Harwood House, the Sailing Club of the Chesapeake, and the Maryland State Bar Association. In further support of the legal profession, I served as a member and then chair of the Maryland State Bar Association Committee on Ethics, uh, as well as uh, on the Grievance Committee Appeal Board. Uh, anyway, at, and several other Maryland State Bar Committees. <clears throat> I was also the treasurer and then the president of the Anne Arundel County Bar Association. While these things were going on, after training at Fort Knox, Kentucky, I served in the Maryland National Guard and spent some summer camps in Virginia at Fort A.P. Hill and Fort Pickett, as well as summer camps in New York at, Camp, at Fort Drum uh, and in Maryland at Fort G, George G. Meade. Our company there was learning to drive, maintain, and fire tanks. 
As for hobbies, I've always enjoyed fishing and woodworking, but I have a special interest in long distance sailing. I have served on as crew on friends sailboats, making deliveries from Annapolis to various ports in New England and back again. One of my two favorite trips was when the friend owner of a boat mere days before we were due to take off advised me that half of the crew had uh, indicated they would not be coming. So essentially with a couple of days before we were supposed to leave, I enlisted my wife, Randy, and our youngest daughter, Emily, to join the crew and they were happy to do so. They especially enjoyed uh, motoring past the Statue of Liberty and then going in the East River into Long Island Sound on our way to um, uh, Newport, Rhode Island. The other favorite trip was with my son, Jeffrey, and we helped a friend and his wife bring their boat back to Annapolis from Greenwich, Connecticut, through New York City again. I've also skippered sailboats crewed by family and friends around the British Virgin Islands and some of the Greek Isles. Okay. Traveling is also a special interest. In addition to trips around the, the country and trips around the BBIs and Greece, a couple of years ago, my wife Randy and I went on a cruise ship leaving from Buenos Aires, Argentina around Cape Horn and ending up in Santiago, Chile. Now locally, I'm involved as an officer of the Cape Charles Yacht Club. Uh, I serve on committees for a Hungers Episcopal Church. And finally, I'm a volunteer for the Northampton Social Ministries. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Jackie, you may have one real lawyer in the club in case you missed that, all right? Uh, uh, Walter, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I may have missed this at the beginning, but did you say that you were uh, originally from Maryland or? I'm or in diapers. Where? I was born in Charleston, <laughs> South Carolina, just because I wanted to be near my mom at the time. That's what I said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And so I, my career was in Annapolis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Walter, so how did you end up um, coming to Cape Charles, uh, um, finding it and making that choice to be your uh, retirement home? <clears throat> we were looking around for uh, possibly a vacation home. We had friends that had vacation homes in Kiowa, South Carolina, and uh, Datal, South Carolina such a long, long drive. And one of our friends has a boat that he took around Delmarva and stopped at all the marinas coming up and down the bay. And he was especially impressed by the restrooms at Bay Creek Marina. As, as you all probably know, they're, they're marble and very elegant. So we looked it up on the internet, things looked good. And we took a trip down here one day and liked what we saw. Uh, as we came back again from time to time, uh, we noticed the prices going up. And we figured if we didn't jump in, this was back in 2004, if we didn't jump in and buy a property, we would not be able to afford it anymore. And so we went ahead and bought this, rented it out a few years, and uh, uh, we finally sold our Naples home in 2015. And then moved here full time. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of had a similar story. I, I caught a thing in the newspaper actually about building Bay Creek in 2004. And I was familiar with the area. And at the time I was thinking back when I worked over here in the early seventies, how I hate to use the word, but decrepit the town of Cape Charles was 
when I worked here in the early 70s. And I just kind of got curious. I wonder what it's like now. And I came down here in 2004, too, and quite a change had happened, you know, and much like what you saw. And I really liked what I saw. And that was about 11 years before I retired, but I was already kind of thinking about where do I want to retire? And uh, it came down to between either Cape Charles or um, Winchester, Virginia. So, mm -hmm. any other questions for Walter? Well, Walter, we're glad you made the choice to come down here. You got here about a year before I did. I moved down um, in 2016. So we have similar stories. And of course, I'm from Maryland as well. OK, um, if there's no other questions, or does anybody want to bring up anything else outside of what we've been talking about? Yeah, Chuck, um, if. Uh, Many of you um, might be curious about how Mary Yu is doing. And uh, Jackie and I have stayed in touch with um, Mary. Mary considers me her US father and Mehdi is her US mother. So <clears throat> she, she stays in touch with us. And about, three, about two weeks ago, she called and um, said, look, Bill, I've got a job offer um, and she it was a handsome job offer with well, with a well-known bank and uh, she she wasn't sure if she would wanted to do that and we talked about it and my my advice is always i don't care what the issue is sleep on it <laughs> so i told her to sleep on it and while she was sleeping Another uh, investment uh, company called and um, and offered her a job, and she was really uh, torn as to what she would, should do. And they got into a bidding war over um, Mary, and and you'll be happy to know that Mary is walking in some very tall cotton. <laughs> and she's doing very well and seems to be very happy down there. Good. I wasn't sure whether she was leaving Merrill Lynch or was staying with Merrill Lynch, but down in Texas. But um... now she left Merrill Lynch. Um, they uh... um, her old her <clears throat> old email address that I would use to communicate with her is not working anymore. So. If you have her current email address, I would really appreciate it if you could forward it to me. Yeah, I'll send it to the entire membership since she's an honorary member. Yes. And if you want to stay in touch with her, you can, you know, give her an email. Yeah, we promise to keep emailing her the, uh, the newsletter just so she knows what's going on here. But like I said, her old email address wasn't working anymore. No, she's doing very well. Excellent. Okay, any other news or update from anybody? All right, well, we will call it a day here, a little bit early, but um, it's, it's a fairly decent day out. If you want to get outside, today's the day. It looks like we're going to have a week of cold weather and not so nice weather following today. So, um, Bill, okay, you got it up. All right. Um, Things we think, do, and say. Number one, is, is it the truth? truth? <clears throat> Number two, is, is it fair to all concerned? Three, will, will it build, build goodwill and better friendships? Friendship? Friendship? And four, will, will it, it be beneficial to all concerned? And Stan, your turn. We proved it today. We will have fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, take care, everybody. Stay warm. Bye. 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 Um, Calls from two.